Hello everybody. I would like to use this video to explain to you the layout and the functionality of our programs Mask Integrator and Chroma Mask. Mask Integrator as well as Chroma Mask are both programs that can instantly and automatically mask and crop a subject using the appropriate photographic technique, while Chroma Mask uses one of the three color channels for the keying, as we all know from many Hollywood productions, Mask Integrator calculates the mask using an additionally shot backlight image. Both techniques have pros and cons. Moving subjects, for example, are not suited for any technique using two separate shots for image and mask, but a separate mask, on the other hand, allows for much more detailed crops, especially when it comes to very fine structures of semi-transparent subjects. I will explain both programs at the same time as they are very similar in operation with the exception of a few details. Up here in the bar, you can find four viewing options. The uncropped subject, the mask which is calculated from the additional backlight image in Mask Integrator and from the selected color channel in Chroma Mask, possibly a loaded background image and the target image. In most cases, it is recommended to work in target image mode. If you are satisfied with the target image, you can save it with the Save Single Image button or you use the Save All button to save all images contained within the same folder as the image currently loaded. All settings you may have adjusted for your images will, of course, be loaded and applied. The current settings of the last picture opened will be applied to any new images which haven't yet been opened with the software. Let's start at the beginning by deleting all images and settings by clicking on the Reset All button at the top left of the program. Mask Integrator and Chroma Mask will save all settings related to a specific image in a separate file with the ending .brush. Since I would like to demonstrate this process from the very beginning, I will now confirm the deletion of the .brush file. Usually, you wouldn't want to do that if you did not want to lose your image-related settings. It does not matter if you have shot an entire series of images or if you want to use the application for tether shootings. You first have to load the first image in the photo section. While Chroma Mask will immediately display the target image, I will have to load the backlight image in Mask Integrator via the Mask section. In the background section, I can then select between transparent, white, black, and an individual background image. Since Mask Integrator uses a separate image to create the mask, while Chroma Mask calculates the mask from one of the three color channels, it is possible that, particularly in the case of cameras with a very high resolution, despite using a tripod, there might occur a slight offset, which can be corrected with these arrow buttons. Where you find the path to the mask and the mask offset in Mask Integrator, Chroma Mask has the color fields to select the background color to be deleted. Since a colored background always tends to reflect some of that color onto the subject, Chroma Mask offers two options to correct this color spill. Recover Colors discounts the background's color from the subject's original color and provides more natural results with pure colored backgrounds. If the background you wish to delete is not plain green, blue or red, any tint from the overshining background would also be carved out by this feature. In this case, and especially in the case of neutrally colored subjects, the Desaturate key feature, which desaturates the background color including all tints in the subject, recommends itself over the Recover Colors feature. With the exception of one respective feature, relating to the color correction in Chroma Mask and concerning the technique for the backlight image in Mask Integrator, everything I continue to explain from now on equally applies to both programs. Let's first have a look at how to best optimize the mask. The mask is a black and white image defining the transparency in the picture through brightness. White stands for opaque and black for transparent. Intermediate gray values will result in semi-transparent areas with varying opacities in the target image. 
Usually, a photographed mask is not perfect, which is why the program easily allows for corrections. Since all of these correction settings can automatically be applied to new and not yet open pictures, it is well worth to do this manually instead of using the Auto Optimize feature. First, I activate the Shrink Mask feature. This helps me to get rid of disturbing elements along the edges. The cut edges are usually displayed with a red line that I can move with my mouse. At the moment, the red frame is overlapped by the turquoise marking, which from all four sides snaps from the outside to the first pixel which is not 100% transparent and marks it with an arrow for easier recognition. Since some of the saving options for cropping refer to this turquoise line, you can find the option to deactivate it in the Save section. Ordinarily, this feature should not be deactivated since it greatly facilitates the detection of a sloppy crop. After we have cropped the mask, we activate the Edge Mode. The Edge Mode highlights all pixels within the image which are not yet 100% transparent or opaque. Apart from semi-transparent subjects like glass, only the edges of the subject should be highlighted, hence Edge Mode. Very dark areas surrounding the subject in the mask should become black or 100% transparent in the target image. To achieve this, I move the control for the black point until the pink highlights surrounding the subject disappear. If individual pixels remained outside of the subject, the turquoise line would remain attached to them and point towards those pixels. I do the same with the control for the white point until the highlights of the opaque areas have disappeared. Now, only the edges of the subject as well as the semi-transparent areas remain pink. As you can see down here, below the wine bottle, a few spots have remained. I could simply move the control for the black point a little bit to the right to remove them, but since my subject is a very light white wine, I would also needlessly reduce the gradients of the semi-transparent areas, thus making the brightest areas of the wine transparent. The shrink mask feature is only partially effective because of the bottle's roundness. That is why I select the black mask brush to delete these areas. Unlike the black brush, the white brush causes 100% opacity and the eraser deletes areas painted with the brushes. You can zoom out for rougher brush strokes and zoom in for finer and more detailed work with the brushes. The brush mask highlights all areas where you have used one of the two brushes. The reset button deletes all brush corrections in the current image. Use the C key to copy a brush correction to the clipboard and paste it to the next image using the V key. The Pro version also offers an automation contained in the program settings which allows you to apply your current brush corrections to new and previously unopened images. This is particularly useful if the setup for the photo shoot contains interfering elements that remain the same from one picture to the other and cannot be reached with the shrink mask feature because it would cut the subject. When I deactivate the edge mode, I can see that the results are looking pretty good already. Especially in the case of very transparent subjects, they can end up a little too transparent after setting the black and white points. I can counteract this effect by pushing the white point a little more towards the left. Since this also reduces the amount of transparency gradients, I will not overdo this. The histogram contains an additional control for the mids, which sets the middle gray tone of the mask. If I move it towards the black point, the semi-transparent areas become increasingly opaque. Since this also reduces the gradients between the middle gray tone and the black point, it is prudent not to bring those two controls too close together since the gradients can end up being frayed. For very transparent products, the best setting always depends on the subject. Let me click to the next image. 
This is a rosé wine which is not quite as clear as the very, very light white wine. Here our problems disappear because of the slightly higher opacity in the transparent areas. In the Save section, you can select where on your hard drive the target images are placed when you save them. Since both Mask Integrator and Chroma Mask are predominantly designed for masking subjects, it often makes sense to not only mask the excess background, but also crop it in the target image and possibly rescale the target image to the desired size. If you select the first option under Output Size, neither the position or the size of the subject will change. The other three options will cause it to adjust. Whether the subject will be resized, repositioned, or cropped, the turquoise line is the determining element. With the second option, the crop along the turquoise line will be scaled to fit into the determined size, including the set padding. It leaves you the choice to fit the subject into the determined size and leaving the target image with the aspect ratio of the subject or to fill the canvas surrounding the subject with the background color to make the target image exactly comply with the size that has been specified. The third option crops the target image along the turquoise line without scaling the original pixels of the image and then adds a set margin afterwards. Unnecessary edges within the image can thus be cut without losing any pixel information. The fourth option centers the subject within the original size of the image for the output. Here, just as with option 1, the target images possibly contain large border areas. If you have selected an image as the background, the remaining options always refer to the size and the original ratio of the background image and the turquoise line surrounding the subject has no influence on the output size. If you wish to separate the subject a little bit from the background, you can blur it slightly. When you work with background images, you can position your subject in the background with the mouse by holding down the control key and scale it with the click wheel. As you can see, you can also define all of these settings up here in the photo section numerically, but I admit that I find this method not very intuitive. If you cannot see any subject in the image at one point, it could have been pushed outside of the background. In this case, you can place the subject back onto the background with this small reset button. As you can see here in the photo section, you can find another field to load an LUT. LUT stands for Lookup Table. This is a table that contains the corresponding target's color for every source color contained in the image. Such a table can hold very complex color corrections as well as very creative looks. In product photography, an LUT is very helpful in correcting potential tints or color shifts caused by lighting and the environment. When working with creative backgrounds, an LUT can add a color look to the foreground subject that is corresponding with the background. You can save the current combination of the background image and the lookup table as a so-called theme. The plus symbol adds a new theme and the Save button overwrites the respective theme. Any theme you have saved can be opened by clicking on the small thumbnail. You can find more information on lookup tables and themes on our website. Now that you have finished with all your settings for one image, we can start. If you have already shot a series of images, you can simply skip to the next image in your folder. All settings will be applied to new images that have not previously been opened. Of course, images you have already worked on will keep their settings. If you want to automatically crop while shooting and you have connected your camera to a suitable tethering software on your computer, you can define the target folder for your images in the tethering software to be the same folder from which you have loaded your current image and then activate the Detect Newcomer feature in Chroma Mask and Mask Integrator. 
Chroma Mask or Mask Integrator will watch this folder for new images, load them, crop them by applying the last settings, and display the target image. While Chroma Mask recognizes and loads individual images, Mask Integrator always waits for an image pair. If you want to present a target image to your customers while shooting, for example on a big screen, you can also display the target image in an external window and move this onto a second screen. If all adjustments in the software have been made, they usually work very well for all subsequent images if their subject and the lighting situation are similar. The Autosave feature saves the target image automatically to the pre-selected folder. While this can be of great help in an optimized workflow, it can be imperative for specific applications such as a photo booth where the user should not have any access to the software. The program settings let you select whether the target image should be saved immediately after loading a new image or just before loading the next image. The latter option is advisable if you first wish to have a look at the target image to make some adjustments before it is saved automatically. If you select the first option, you would have to manually click on the Save Single Image button to overwrite the target image that has automatically been saved in case you have made some adjustments. Please note that the autosave feature is only available in the Pro version of Mask Integrator and Chroma Mask. At the end of this video, let's have a look at the remaining program settings. I believe until there, it was all pretty self-explanatory and can be looked up in the manual if necessary. The only thing I feel I should mention is that the setting 0 in the PNG compression leads to very big files and that everything greater than 1 needlessly slows down the saving time. I therefore recommend 1 as the setting. Chroma Mask has a feature specific to Chroma Mask which can suspend the color corrections of the background color in those areas where the white brush has been used. In some cases, the key color may be occurring within the actual subject and can be saved with the white brush. Here, Mask Integrator has the three image mode. Some cameras don't allow any automated shoots of two image series. In this case, you can use the three-shot bracketing mode, which most cameras offer, and Mask Integrator automatically disregards every third image so that the necessary alternation between foreground image and backlight image is not disrupted. If you need quick help when you're working and you don't feel like watching the video or reading the manual, most features will display a tooltip if you leave the mouse above the corresponding feature for more than two seconds. You can find more information on the available shortcuts as well as the link to the manual and this video in the top right corner just behind the question mark. If you ended up changing your license or wish to upgrade from the basic to the pro version, you can enter your new activation key under Change License in the Info window. I know. That was a lot of information in a very short time. But now you have gotten to know Chroma Mask and Mask Integrator inside out and I am absolutely convinced that this training time will save you a lot of time when you start masking images. Have a lot of fun with automatic masking and cropping.